We'll be speaking to a number of people about this very worrying matter. Gauteng's health department and Wits University are trying to work out the details of an agreement on conducive working conditions. This follows the controversial suspension and reinstatement of a pediatrician who spoke out about the uh, dismal conditions at Rahima Musa Hospital. Let's speak now to Wits Dean of Health Sciences, Professor Shabi Mahdi. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. We do appreciate it. You always make time for us. Um, let's just speak about the shock shocking uh, uh, behavior and handling of the situation regarding Dr. Tim DeMeyer. And the reason why we, we say it's shocking is because he wrote a scathing letter to Gauteng Health to say that um, the, the hospital, Rahima Musa, is in the worst state ever. And it makes it very difficult for any doctor to basically work in these conditions. He was then suspended and many were alleging that it had to do with the fact that he wrote this letter. And because of the massive outcry, including outcry from yourself, uh, it seems as though he was reinstated. But many are saying, why not deal with the issue instead of dealing with an individual? Uh, good afternoon, Heidi. Thank you for having me. And you're completely correct. And it was really unfortunate that whoever made this decision to put him onto precautionary suspension didn't really think it through, uh, on my, in my opinion, because had they thought it through, they would have realized that this was going to come under tremendous uh, protest from the public, which is exactly what they transpired, and they eventually needed to backtrack. It's really unfortunate that this is happening in the year 2022. Uh, if we go back to 1988, uh, there was actually a very similar sort of occurrence at Helen Joseph Hospital, where a group of physicians basically wrote an open letter to the Minister of Health that then under a party to Jim. And the reaction of the party to Jim uh, in 1988 was exactly the same as the reaction that transpired this time around. And that is they served a notice of suspension to many of the physicians that were actually involved in that particular occasion when they were raising concerns in the public domain as to the deficits in health, uh, in the quality of health care in facilities because of inadequate investment. So for this new democratic government to have adopted a sort of stance, which a party government actually did way back in 1988, clearly shows that they simply haven't learned from history, that you can't force people to become silent when they're speaking out on issues, which they're morally obliged to do. It would have been incorrect for people such as Dr. DeMaia and others not to raise these concerns in the public domain, especially after the efforts at raising it with the Department of Health, where the management of the hospital had yielded very little fruit. Mm, exactly, because you have a situation where doctors are becoming so desperate. Now they are writing public letters because it seems as though they are just not being heard. And I want us to quickly um, move to a part of the letter where uh, Dr. DeMaia says, children are dying and the horrendous conditions in our public hospitals are contributing to their deaths. It goes on to say, I wish you could come to our unit and see doctors trying to incubate children and administer cardio uh, resurrection by their, um, by their mobile uh, phone torches as the power has failed again. The fact that doctors have to use their mobile torches because they are not uh, excluded from load shedding uh, is something that I just can't understand how, for example, the CEO or Gauteng Health don't find this as urgent as possible. You are dealing with children. You are not dealing, whatever it might have been, it, this is so important. And again, Professor Mahdi, it speaks to the state of Gauteng Health, that people are not understanding how dire it is and how desperate doctors are for urgent intervention. You being in the healthcare space, I'm sure you witness this every single day. Yeah, and it is totally incomprehensible. It's not that only public hospitals are actually affected by power outages. Uh, private hospitals are also affected by, by power outages. But the difference is that uh, private hospitals have got backup facilities and they ensure that the infrastructure is kept intact, that when they experience such power outages, they can, uh, they can basically rely on the backups, which includes generators and other forms of backup. Now, the fact that we've had power outages in South Africa for more than a decade almost uh, should basically be an indication to people that are responsible for these infrastructures that a type of backup that's required, especially under these emergency circumstances, is something that we need to invest in and something that we need to ensure is kept up to scratch in terms of functionality. So it is horrendous uh, that, we're needing to, uh, that we're needing to intubate little children using a cell phone uh, light 
Uh, but in addition to that, we also need to understand that that's just one component of, in the, of making sure the child survives. It's also about putting the child back on the ventilator, which basically is also requires power. So we need to understand we are operating under difficult conditions, and the only way to overcome this is to ensure that we invest adequately, both in maintenance as well as the upkeep of infrastructure, which we are unfortunately not doing too well in the public sector in particular. Mm. Sorry, I meant to say resuscitation. I was so angry that I came up with uh, the, the, a wrong word. <laughs> but uh, I want us to quickly move into politics, and I don't want this conversation to become political because uh, this is people, people's lives we are talking about. And uh, perhaps many are saying that, you know, it's politics over people's lives, and this is where Gauteng Health is getting it all wrong, to say, why not leave the politics aside? Because many are saying that this decision to suspend Dr. Tim was political more than anything. It wasn't looking at addressing the issues. So why can Gauteng Health not understand, and maybe perhaps in your opinion, that we should leave politics aside, we should leave the games aside, because people are dying and children are dying? Yeah, I don't even think it was a political uh I don't even think it was uh, underpinned by political agenda uh, because it was just really poorly thought out. Uh, basically, the way to have approached this was to address the root causes, which led to Dr. De Maia raising this sort of concerns and trying to imagine that these uh, concerns were going to go away by putting one person uh, on suspension uh, clearly shows a naivety in terms of what the public expectations is of the Department of Health. So I don't think it's politically driven. I just think it was a poorly thought out decision on whoever made the decision to basically take this uh, root cause of action rather than addressing the root cause. Uh, but the other big challenge that we face in Gauteng is unfortunately the instability of leadership in the Gauteng Department of Health. Uh, we've had a number of uh, MECs over the past 10 years. We've had a huge number of age health head of departments. In fact, since I started as dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, we're now on the fourth health of department within a space of about uh, 18 months. Now, with that sort of instability in leadership, it's almost impossible to get anything going and keep the momentum going because each time a new person comes in, they, have, they come in with their own plans. And basically, you're back to square one. So stability in the Gauteng Department of Health is an absolute must if we are wanting to make progress. And that progress needs to be made in collaboration with other stakeholders in these facilities, which includes the university, and also needs to bring in the private sector, because they've got the know-how in terms of how to run these sort of facilities under emergency conditions. And it's high time the Gauteng Department of Health, the private sector, and the university start working hand in hand to really to turn the corner in what is an absolute disaster in our public health facilities. Certainly, I think it's so important for everybody to just understand the severity of the situation. Thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you for speaking out. I think it's so important. We had many doctors and professors speaking out and saying uh, that this was completely unacceptable, the suspension of Dr. Uh, Tim uh, DeMaia. Let's uh, thank uh, Professor Shabimadi, who is the Vits Dean of Health Sciences. Thank you so much for your time.